What are your group's inside jokes? Every table has them. What are your in-jokes? Whenever our cleric decided to do nothing for the turn except command his zombies, he would say, I'm going to go jack off in the corner. (laughs) (laughs) Which resulted in all the characters avoiding him whenever he was in the corner of a room. (laughs) Before we go any further, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and let's continue on with the thread. There was a warlock in our group who was married to his patron. Once we realised she was married to all her patrons, the cuck jokes were never ending. (laughs) (laughs) Anytime one of our group is going to do something monumentally stupid, they have to say, hold my beer. They then have to give the beer to somebody else in the group. If they succeed, they get the beer back. If they fail, the other person gets to drink it. Comes from when the paladin had just completed a courtly dance with a noble's daughter, and the bard then decided, hold my beer before trying it with the noble's wife, and not just flubbing the roll with a natural one, but rolling a second natural one to talk his way out of embarrassment, and instead accidentally propositioning her, (laughs) then doubling down and saying he was much better, under a sheet than on his feet. (sighs) Hold my beer, not just flubbing the roll with a natural one, but rolling a second natural one. (laughs) Once when I was a DM, one of my players was plating a female dragonborn. I expressed a passing doubt on whether she should have a vagina or a kalaka. Boy, that sure caught up with the rest of the group and they would not stop teasing him about it. I came to regret mentioning it. The same NPC has followed my D&D group across three different settings run by three different DMs. To be honest with you, I love it when that happens. Yeah. I I love a bit of continuity. Yeah, no. I I, I really have a bit of a problem when it's the continuity, though. I suppose that's why I love Metal Gear Solid so much. During an Old Republic Star Wars game, my first character was taken aside by a fellow Sith and given the option to become his apprentice. My character was the prideful type and refused. He then got his fucking head chopped off forever cementing the line, don't make me take you back into the closet, to become a threat in our group. That, and it became a joke that I'm afraid of flaming brazers, after that same character got fucking force-smacked in the face by one. One of the regular jokes of my group is, I am X and I was fired from random real or fake organisation for incompetence, because in our first session... Our edgy wizard we barely knew tried to explain what he was doing in the Adventurer's Guild and he just said, I'm a badass wizard man and I was banned from the Mage's Guild for incompetence. (laughs) (laughs) The difference between the way he played his character as Magic Batman and the fact that he was fired because of incompetence destroyed the sides of everyone. The joke never got old. Not that funny in hindsight but still gets me every time. Absolute best one I have. Only war campaign. Rebels in a firehouse, and we got ourselves on a beat up but working Lehman Russ. Rest of us go into the firehouse to arrest the rebels or put them down. One player decides to stay in the Russ. Firefight breaks out. Hostages are taken, and in the clearly described and audible chaos, one rebel slips out and knocks in the tank door. Player answers, What do you want? GM musters the shittiest reason to get into a tank I've ever heard. Here. I've never been in a tank before. Can I come in? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, actually, I've never been in a tank before, though. I I wouldn't say no to that. The player fucking lets them in. Anytime an incredibly stupid decision is about to be made from then on, we just say, here, I've never been in a tank before. Laughs in shoe, and the plan is either double down or rethought out. Good game, good game, good game. Basically, our games would derail so hard that someone sarcastically said how good the game was, which somehow evolved into us yelling good game at the top of our lungs while vigorously shaking everyone's hand at the end of every session. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually quite good, I yeah. that one. Roll that D100, boyo. Have an over-the-top Irish cop NPC in our Pulp Cthulhu game that shows up in some way in every session. Ended all of his conversations with boyo whenever we roll a d100 in D&D. It means something's gone wrong. Really scared right now. Was something one of our players muttered during basically every point of Strad to the point we started making fun of them for it. Cortez effect. Was something we dubbed when something's insane, absurd, or batshit loony happens because of 
good roles at dumb times. Named after one of the characters who was infamous for doing these types of things often. Like convincing himself he could fly and then jumping 60 foot in the air. What? One of many absurd stories. <laughs> Is that like this? Remember that movie? What was that movie where Samuel Jackson and the Lock jump off the building? Oh, Yes you know, Man, yeah, or was yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Aim for the bushes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I've got in mind for that. Sanctify the Inner Vessel from a game of Hunter where one of my players would vape holy water because he thought it would help him deal with vampires and other beasties. Oh, mate, I need to do that. Vape need... niche. No, you, I, just, I... you know what you need to get? Just an actual vape and just blow smoke over I, the map. Yeah, no, I need to get that for my paladin for the West March game. I need to get a vape, so I think I would always try to present my players with moral dilemmas where there wasn't really a good choice. So they had to settle for the least bad choice. Usually this resulted in them chimping out and killing everyone in sight, which we eventually started to call Choosing Option 3 Stone Cold. <laughs> because we were all fans of Stone Cold's feud with the Ministry and the Corporation. Corporation. <laughs> it's okay, he's got nine more characters. Because I'm so death prone, I've been resurrected at least twice per character, and I've gone through three characters at this point. People who say that 5th edition isn't lethal haven't played any games. <laughs> While introducing a new NPC to the party, one of the party members asks where he healed from. I hadn't prepared that information, so I just said, he points east. Now whenever the party is getting directions, they ask, do they point east? <laughs> Rogue in my group is a notorious witch fag. Like, 80% of his awake time is devoted to drawing witches or thinking about witches. Can't get an erection if a pointy hat and a broom are not involved. <laughs> One of the plot hooks he comes across is about a coven of witches in the north. End up meeting them after searching the swamp for clues. They're all old meg tier hags interested in his sweet rogue booty and the flesh of the other party members. He gets downed during the battle while still in range of one of the witches. The group's paladin heals him before they could attempt anything nefarious. Now everyone jokes about how he nearly got raped by the coven. <laughs> For God's sake. They didn't count. They had no pointy hats. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to buy 50 pounds of dark wood. Or please release me. Mind flare, only two in the universe. With army of thralls so extensively mind controlled. And then given such extensive instructions. Full code grease style that they can function in normal life and serve their overlord. They also automatically teleport back to base when deceased and resurrect via implant fuckery. So whenever we see a goblin on the road, basically we stand to confront them and see what they do. I'm waiting for DM to throw a curveball with one who's not hypnotised or just attacks us. The only way you can really tell is that they're generally insensate to their surroundings, very slow to react to a changing situation and have set flat voice lines. Some don't look like they should be there on the road in these conditions, but many do. Advanced ones are harder to tell, but the line, please release me, is always in there and pretty much a dead giveaway. But we met them first when a ship of them came to a colony and would say, I would like to buy 50 pounds of dark wood until they got it. So basically we just stand there and block them slash provoke them until they say that line and we jump them. Clerk always insists we kill them. I always insist we try to help them. Most of the party is neutral, but tends to slide with not killing, while DM is favouring us turning out to be secretly evil, and championing the cleric to do so. They're a sucker for good deeds paying off, so when I convince them to try and save a person, it's often hard and a test of patience, but we succeed in one way or another. Fucking goblins. Whenever someone forgets something crucial... We circumvent a plot hole. The GM retcon something or anything like that. It's fucking goblins. We don't know how, why or even where, but fucking goblins did this. Even if there are no goblins in the setting. Sounds like a solid reason, yeah, to be yeah, honest with you. Yeah. Like, for example, a player stored most of their inventory in their saddlebags on a horse they left at camp and have been swapping out their inventory in this cave and nobody remembered that he didn't actually have any of this on him. How? Fucking goblins. It's dumb, it's not funny, but it helps smooth out shit and has also evolved into a way for characters to disappear without dying. 
They're off looking for those fucking goblins. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I kind of like that one. That's actually a, neat, a nice, sweet, easy yeah. one yeah. to like light away problems. You know yeah. what I mean? Sometimes it's your doing yeah. like that. You know? Enter Sinecius, the chaotic evil rogue that was part of our first ever adventuring party. He was an absolute fucking madman who snuck away from us too. One, poison the city's food supply. Hey, 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 that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Two, piss off the mob by killing a prostitute. Ooh. Three, rob various people. Four, get himself arrested and have us set a whole city on fire and kill countless innocents to save him. Five, kill the wizard that had brought our party together to try and join the main villain who had none of it and this only led to his death and my character's defecation to the main villain. You mean defecation? Is defecation not shit? Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. What, what is it? Oh, defection. Defection. <laughs> <Megan. laughs> I was so confused. Right, keep going. Focus. <laughs> now, whenever something bad happens in the original game setting, we consider blaming fucking Sinecius, since he unironically ended up making things worse for us in our initial campaign. He may be dead, but he's still shitting stuff up for everyone from beyond the grave. Maybe it was shitting? He says shitting? Yeah, it could be, maybe, maybe. Oh, yeah. And he tried to buy off a 13-year-old girl from her mother to use her as a sex slave, too. Oh, my God. Oh, God. For fuck's sake. Next one. Oh, and where's a ding, 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 ding? <laughs> <laughs> Chopper's Basement. Ram Party 3 Pathfinder's first adventure path. Rise of the Rune Lords. Gave them multiple plot hooks to work with, both from the AP and tacked on. Some of the side quests were tailored up to the characters. Others were plot hooks that originally went nowhere, but over the years got official or fan content. One of these was expanding on the late unpleasantness and Chopper's murder spree five years prior to AP start. Tied to character's loved one being a victim and the possibility that spirits aren't at rest. No one at the table tracks stuff as well as I do. So the party asked me what their current options are. I mentioned plot A, plot adjacent quest B, and for brevity, refer to Chopper's side quest as Chopper's Basement, because it's located under Chopper's burned out shack. Party immediately wants to abandon all plots and go there. Chopper's Basement has long since been cleared, and the spirits have been put to rest. The campaign has ended, but every time the players face a multiple choice plot fork, the answer to what would you like to do first? As always, we go to Chopper's Basement. <laughs> <laughs> mid 90s Shadowrun. General description of an interrogation chamber with an oppressive feel to it. And lastly, there is also a fairly large and somewhat withered potted plant in the corner of the room. You feel threatened by the plant? Huh? Why would we feel threatened by the plant? Does it have a gun or something? Huh? I guess we should probably kill it, right guys? Guys, nobody threatens us. <laughs> And thus was born the running in-joke of the armed decorative shrubbery that is still going to this day. We should probably try to bind a corporeal entity into this wheel of cheese. What? (laughs) (laughs) What? Binding a demon into an object could only be done with items of a certain value. And the only choice we had at the time was either the paladin's hauberk or this really fancy wheel of gourmet cheese. So into the cheese the demon went. (laughs) Since then, the Wheel of Cheese is always the first go-to option considered when dealing with spirits, demons and the like. Pretty solid choice. I I, I like that. What happens if you eat the cheese? What happens if you eat the cheese? Oh, yeah. uh, What if you leave it out and you have guests around or something? Somebody's like, "Mm, nice bit of fucking cheese. Goes over, takes a munch out of it. And he's like, no. I think you're getting possessed. Starts walking backwards down the stairs like you're (laughs) wondering. From, uh, what do you call it? Exorcist. Uh, Exorcist, yeah. Okay, Jimmy, not so much an in-joke, but as an inside reference when the GM player was being an asshole. Like if the GM was railroading or a PC was a blatant Gary Stu. We had a guy named Jimmy on our grip one time. Jimmy was my uncle, and arguably the founder of our grip. He was known for being atrocious, both at the table and away from it. Away from it, he did terrible things like stalk his ex-girlfriend and threaten party members when they did things he didn't like. Hence why we don't play with him anymore. As a GM, he flagrantly railroaded the party into positions he deemed interesting. That's never a good sign. Whenever they say interesting, it just means bad. No. I think we should have an arc where everyone is enslaved by the Skaven. Ooh, Ooh, no. I do like Skaven. 
As a player, he injected his fetishes into the game. Right. Fuck me. I fucked the woman while pegging her with my tail and insisted on asserting himself as the lead character of the group. Imagine playing a game with your own. He's putting his fucking fetishes in Oh, me. Not your uncle. Not my uncle. Not Uncle Jimmy. Not Jimmy. When asked why he wanted so desperately to be in that role and why he got angry when the party quietly refused, he felt it was appropriate for his character type. And he played the same character every time. You know what? I'm going to have to start that. A poopy character type just means my character's... <laughs> <laughs> that, therefore, my character's Peter. You know, you're probably going to act like that, yeah? Yeah? So his character was a male knight samurai Roman legionnaire who was white. He explicitly and adamantly refused to play non-white characters who had a tragic backstory and inevitably used it as an excuse to be abusive to NPCs. I punched him in the face because he laughed about my mom. I never knew my mom. <laughs> there is an unspoken rule that anyone who acts like this gets called out and laughed at for it. And calling each other Jimmy is a way of highlighting someone else's bullshit. That's pretty That's good. That's pretty good. I like that one. Fuck's like sake, one. Jimmy. I don't know what Jimmy is. There any chance, mate? Hey guys, so I hope you've enjoyed that video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you have any of your own in-jokes from your group, put them down below. We might make a video out of it. If Who we knows? get enough good ones, we'll do it. If we get enough good ones, we'll, we'll do it. Like... Yeah, but I find like a lot of these like in-jokes, it's one of those, you have to be there moments yeah, to do. get it. you do. You have to be there to really understand yeah. the joke. But look, as always guys, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, models, down below. Models. Check the models out. All that other shit down below and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. All those moments lost in time.